What is up, everyone? Hey. Welcome back to another Tim and Katie Live, the second in two weeks time because we missed a week because we were super tired and kind of sick and just all around lazy. So we're catching up this week. I'm Tim. I'm Katie. And every day is a new adventure, guys. Thank you for joining us. Let us see who we have here. I knew it was going to be a little bit of a lighter night because this topic that we're covering tonight is not quite as exciting as filming in theme parks, coaster credits, all that stuff we've been covering. But I think it's important, especially for the kind of content we produce. So we've got it's Kaylee. Also some behind the scenes stuff. It is some you. behind the scenes stuff. We got Kaylee, who thinks I'm the budget master. He is, actually. <laughs> Not for saving money. <laughs> I told Tim, I was like, I'm not going to have anything to say. I literally just show up to these trips. <laughs> no, I mean, you weigh in, though. I guess. Keeping up in Disney, Jamie and Ari, thank Here's you Here's how joining. I weigh in. Katie, would you like to do this really expensive princess breakfast? Yes. And that's my way. Uh-uh. No, actually, you say, um, that's really expensive. And I go, but I really want to do it. And then you're like, okay, then yes. I want to do that princess breakfast. <laughs> Vanessa is in. Welcome. And I'm guessing Chad is manning the two tickets account. Cool. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Double trouble. Yes, adulting 100%, Vanessa. <laughs> I am Katie. Chad is the planner. Yes. Also, real quick, because I don't think I might have said this, but if I did, it was immediately lost in the void of my mind. We would also like to go to Disneyland Paris someday. And in fact, we had a trip planned and had to scrap it because it wasn't planned. Gestures it vaguely. was theorized i would say it was the well we had it mapped out on paper i'll get into it because yeah. that actually i think it, we're, we're going to cover kind of things like this um before we get started guys i do want to do what i normally do and call out our socials if you're not following us on instagram you are missing out because we do live play-by-play -play posts when we go out you can get kind of a head start on the content that we're going to produce eventually the Facebook page, we do a little less posting on, but everything from Instagram carries over to the Facebook page. I am going to do something special for Facebook eventually because I do. I know there are some people that just follow on Facebook, and I want to give them a shout out or proper shout out so they're not missing anything. But for now, Instagram is my go-to. And then, of course, we have a website as well. TimandKatie.net is where we post all of our blogs. A little bit behind. We're behind on some blogs. A little bit behind at the moment, but we will catch up. Oh, hey, look. Hold on. I'm going to make us big again. We got Mitch and Devin in. They are Hi. just back from Belize. Oh my gosh. Trip. Far more fanciful than us folk over here with our Disneyland sweater. Trip FOMO big time. <laughs> Major that. trip FOMO. Definitely check out their Instagram for some awesome reels and photos from their trip that they just did for a friend's wedding, I think. So, yeah. um, but it was it that the place where they stayed, like the jungle, jungle cabin thing looked awesome so cool there's an actual word for it it's it's, 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 like, it's hut but it's like the luxury version of a hut that i can't Cab uh, cabana no i don't know if it's not cabana. Quite mitch devin please weigh in we're we're fools on jungle this something or other jungle something or other it looked great it looked amazing all right tonight we are going to be talking about something that sounds boring and it does i know it does but it might be a little boring it's not no it's not well it depends on what kind of person you are, I guess. If you're a little bit left brain, you'll find this fascinating. Yes, if I'm you sure. love spreadsheets, <laughs> if it's not going to be. No, you're scaring them away. It's not going to be spreadsheet heavy. Spreadsheet. Oh, they called it a treehouse. Oh, 
Well, that's even cooler. Well, that's simplistic. It's just a treehouse. Not no, it's not just a treehouse. It's like a fancy. It's a fantabulous treehouse. Fancy, fantastic treehouse. <laughs> anyway, Mandy loves spreadsheets. Well, Welcome, this is Mandy. the live for you. <laughs> this is the live for you. Now everyone should stay. I'm sure we'll be up to Have our usual. Have we Andy. got a show for you? Ooh, if you know that reference. <laughs> okay. All right. So. This, the reason we wanted to do this, number one is because we just came back from Disneyland. As you can see, we're both wearing our jerseys, our spirit jerseys. Represent. Mine is a little more boring than her ink and paint one. But we're back fresh from a trip from Disneyland, which we covered on our last live, kind of the trip report. And that one went a really, really long time because we had so much to cover. This one, much shorter. But um, it's expensive to go these places. California in particular was a super expensive trip. There was no way around it. California is a very expensive state. It's expensive to travel anywhere, but especially to some of these destinations. Orlando, I think we're kind of getting used to and we know how to save money when we go to Orlando because we go there often enough. But for some of these places, you look at the opportunity, the theme parks in the area, if you're us and you're theme park nerds, if you look at the local attractions, you want to do, let's say, a studio tour in Burbank, which is something that we did with our friend Kaylee in um, California. But all of this, you're looking at it and you're like, I would love to do this, but I don't know how. Don't think that we didn't have that thought. <laughs> Every trip starts with, on paper, it looks awesome, but how the heck are we going to afford this? And that's why when we came back from California, a lot of the, you know, the stuff that we were posting on Facebook, all the pictures and such, and the Instagram posts we were making along the way, one of the questions we got most often was, how the heck can you afford this? And how much did that cost? How much did something? that cost? Yeah. So we thought that, you know, even though this is kind of a logistical conversation, it was one worth having. And I know that a lot of our fa uh, fans, a lot of our friends that follow us on Instagram and Facebook, um, they had similar questions and that they also would like to plan some of these trips in the future. So we thought we'd kind of give you guys a leg up and walk you through what we did and see if it works for you. So the very first thing I want to say is that it's not a one size fits all situation. This is just going to be strictly what works for us. As a we have been couple of as family, a couple, of two. family of two. Yes, we have no kids. We don't have to worry about little ones. We don't have to worry about feeding extra mouths. Um, we go a lot of places. We go to Orlando a lot. We go to California. We've been to California recently, but we've already got plans to go back after this most recent trip. Um, we've just booked another trip this morning and we already have another trip uh that i won't spoil but we, we have another trip that's coming up in july where we may or may not be seeing another one of our friends again um but we go a lot of places and so the reason number one the reason we're able to do this is because we've been blessed with two good we both work full-time we have no kids we live in a smaller space that we're comfortable in living in for the time being so we're not putting tons of money down on a mortgage or anything like that. So we have what I would call advantages, which allow us to do these things, particularly with, with particularly with Disney. We also have the Disney Vacation Club, which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's a basically a timeshare situation with Disney. Anyone can sign up for it. It's a lot of money up front, and then you're basically on a 10-year private loan with Disney, and you can pay things down. And that translates to being able to stay on property for free, once a year, yeah. more or less. You it's get not certain, for free. You prepaid. You prepaid, you prepaid in large quantities. And you can <laughs> stay at deluxe resorts yeah. without paying the rack rate. Yo, Jamie and Ari got the reference. <laughs> Love it. Um, yes, 100% credit yep. card debt is real. That's the other thing I was going to say, too, is that let's not kid ourselves. After every trip, there is a mountain of debt. Because we put everything on the credit card when we go. And we, we plan to, so it's not it like a surprise. But slowly, sometimes before the next trip, sometimes not. It depends on the scale of the trip. And that's yeah. fine. Like if you're expecting to be hit with a massive wall of debt after a trip, it's not a huge surprise. We try to set a budget for each trip. And if we come in under budget, we're doing great. If we come in at budget, we're doing fine. If we come in over budget, it's not the end of the world unless we go way over budget. Yeah. And that is kind of what ever done way over. No, most we come in like three hundred or four hundred dollars under. Yeah. But one 
I think the California trip, we actually did go a little bit over, but to be fair, I got sick. And so I had to account for, you know, buying a thermometer and going to we the were a clinic walking and, pharmacy yeah. for a while there. It, <laughs> and we were buying lots and lots and lots and lots of water, which gets real expensive if you don't buy it by the caseload. Hey, Morgan's in. Hi. Hey, hey Morgan. Morgan. We are talking about budgeting, <laughs> not going broke on your Disney vacation or other vacations. <laughs> yes, absolutely. California is expensive. Yep. All right. So anyway, this is strictly going to be what works for us. It is not going to be a one, it's one size fits all. I am having just such a time with words tonight, guys. I am so sorry. Um, but this, I think, is important for those who are planning to go on a big trip. Um, if you're going on a big trip for the first time, this can be kind of like a starting area. <laughs> it's a foundation, if you will on which you can build the rest of your plan. So that having been said, and all of our advantages having been noted, I'm gonna walk you through basically what we do. It may or may not be what you wind up doing. It's fine to be a little bit more frugal than we are because we tend to splurge sometimes on trips. We live frugally we on like the day by day so we can splurge on our trips. Special thing. But there are ways to do this while being frugal too, right? Okay, step one, give yourself time. We have right now three trips planned for the remainder of 2022 which sounds like a lot but be advised that they were all planned for the most part a year ago or thereabouts between oh, like a eight months to eight, a year. eight months to a year so everything that's on our calendar now with the exception of some like nightly stuff um like going to haunts in the fall we know we're going to do that but we don't know where we're going to go so we just earmark some saturdays or whatnot the big trips, not only do we try to book them as early as possible, because most places you can book something, pay one night's down payment for like a hotel or something, and then pay off the rest of the package gradually, which is what we like to do. We like to secure our spot, and then we like to pay as we go. Um, but most everything that is on the calendar now was planned 8 to 12 months ago. So we like to give ourselves lots of time. The, the two reasons for that are the one I already mentioned, which is you get a chance to pay everything down as you go. You know exactly how much you're going to spend. And by the time you get to the trip, you have less to spend in person, which is good for other reasons I will mention. But also, travel is more expensive on shorter notice. Mm -hmm. I put a picture of an airplane here because this is like my number one example of something that becomes more expensive the longer you wait. Buying flights. If you're traveling by air somewhere, good luck booking last minute. If you give yourself three months or less, not only do the seats start depleting because newsflash guys, the pandemic may not be over, but the pandemic freeze on people feeling safe traveling and all, that's over. Middle seats being empty, that's over. And masks on planes. <laughs> masks on planes officially over. In like, at least in the domestic US, I don't know. Yeah, about international here. if flights. anyone's watching UK, yeah, that's that may not be the case, but I think it is actually in most places now. So the planes are being filled to capacity and they're selling out early. Um, we have had trouble at, at times booking a flight at, on short notice. Um, we try not to do it for our own recreational needs, but sometimes we have to travel for family or something. It's really hard to get a plane ticket at the last minute. Uh, and if you do get one, expect it to be expensive because all the discount, we use Southwest a lot and they have like tiered pricing. So like the cheapest tier is the tier that sells out the quickest. That's open seating and it's flexible travel. And it's basically like not guaranteeing you a very comfortable flight, but it is cheap. So those sell out really quick. By the time we get to two or three months before the flight, you're looking at what they call business select. They don't have first class on Southwest, but that's the closest thing. That's you boarding before anyone else, getting the most legroom and paying probably 200 bucks more than you should per seat. So plan ahead for multiple reasons. It is the best way to go. <laughs> I already have questions. Look at all this. Flights have gotten so pricey, 100%. I feel like demand has surged and therefore they feel the ability to increase yeah, the cost. They're hiking the price up. They have, yeah, supply and demand. Crystal's in. Hey, Hi, Crystal. Crystal. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Crystal does a lot of traveling too, you guys. So she is an expert in this field as well. <laughs> Got quite a few world travelers among us. Vanessa our says friends. no less than six months out. Absolutely. Super planners. 
So this is a good point as well. Um, I will we'll get to hotels, but I as far as points and using rewards programs, we've been flying Southwest for a long time, not because they're the best, just because they're the easiest sometimes. Um, and we don't really have a problem with Southwest. Every airline has had the same problems that Southwest has had juggling flights over the last year. And air travel can be very tricky in the long run, regardless of what airline you're flying. But even with all the flights we've taken, it takes a long time. And most of these flight programs are on like annual accruals. So if you don't fly a certain number of times in a calendar year, you lose all those points. We did just book a flight. I don't even think I told you this, actually. We did just book See, a flight. See, he's the planner. I just show up, guys. I don't <laughs> we did, know. We did just, just book a flight using points for the very first time. And that was an accumulation of my Rapids Rewards points with Southwest. I'm talking one seat, one flight out, out of probably I mean, 15 it, to 20. Isn't it over by the last miles day. that they like your points add up? It's not it depends like on the airline. With know. Southwest, it is. But well, yeah, miles play a role in how many points you accrue for each flight. Mm -hmm. But your accrual. Because I'm just thinking like how. It's like, not static. Like we flew places. to Florida like three or four times last year, but that's not that long of a flight morgan flies spirit good luck to you yeah. <laughs> we've isn't spirit joining with spirit frontier and frontier have merged i have not heard good things about either one i'm gonna be honest we've never flown spirit we know plenty of people who have and some people do swear by it but morgan yeah, my... if you have good things or bad things to say about spirit please feel free I feel to drop like them in i don't hear great things about spirit but people just like it because of the it is cheap. it is the most competitive it pricing is i think down and dirty Oh no, buy your ticket immediately. Actually, flying that. from Florida to Boston, that's not a short flight. No. That's... You won't be comfortable for that one. Mm -hmm. And Donna's in too. Hi, she Donna. also books air rare super early. Welcome, Donna. Sorry if You're I missed you. You're a good beginning. company. I love, oops. I love, not that I don't love you, Morgan. <laughs> I love Chad and Vanessa helping out in the comments here, Southwest credit card. Yeah, that's the other thing I was gonna say regarding points is that with a credit card, most of the major airlines have credit cards now. If you buy a credit card, you'll rack up points a lot faster. We didn't do that, simply because we have too many credit cards. So I mean, I don't adding think, to yeah. our- <laughs> I think it might, might be beneficial. worth if we consolidated and did like the Disney credit card and maybe the Southwest well, yes. credit card. Well, yes, if we're going to go, well, we have, for example, Disney Vacation Club, right? right? Because we go to Disney so often and we knew we were gonna keep going to Disney so often. So it made sense for us to invest that money in upfront so that we could save money later on. The thing of it is, if you're talking about an opening another line of credit, which is a whole other barrel of monkeys, uh, you're also impacting your credit score Buying into Disney Vacation Club is a private loan from Disney. It doesn't touch your credit score. That credit score is not even aware of Disney Vacation Club. So it's you have to kind of weigh the pros and cons. If we do something a lot, I would say we should look into getting a credit card to cover some of the specific expenses. Going to Target, we have a Target red card. We save 5%. And that also helps us save 5% on Disney gift cards, by the way. We buy them at Target. We buy them in $100 increments. We go and we put them on the Target card. We get $5 off because of the Target card. So little things like that do add up. But I wouldn't say we necessarily fly enough. If we were flying like once a month, 100% we would go in on a credit card. We fly... Uh, I was gonna, I was the... gonna way overshoot it. I would say like three times a year, back and forth. So six flights maybe, but I mean we're already at two, and we're definitely flying at least two more times back and this forth. year. Oh yeah, you're right. Maybe we should look into it. I was saying <laughs> that. See, maybe so. Maybe Tim's not the budget master he thought he was. I mean, I think you are, <laughs> but I think there's other ways. There's, there, Like we had said, there's more than one way to budget. And a lot of our friends seem to go with the... Bleh, I see, I can't talk either. Specific Spirit credit or, cards. Yeah. Specific credit cards. I she love, survived a recent Spirit flight. She did. I love... This is my favorite thing about doing the live shows is that everyone is so helpful in the comments and like everyone is helping each other. We're, we're building a community. It's cohesive. It's lovely. We love you guys. Thank you guys for helping each other out. We really appreciate it. 
Morgan says, for someone who is short and doesn't need leg room, is mostly traveling alone, less problems than most on other or most other airlines. I guess you do have that advantage. I have Morgan. heard that spirit is kind of cramped. Um, I am not. I'm a, I'm average height, I guess. Um, my legs are longer than my torso, though, so I tend to want to have a little bit more leg room. But I can work with most spaces. I'm not like snobby about my airline. I just. Again, we fly Southwest because Southwest is the system we know. Different airlines, different systems can get a little bit chaotic. We also have never had like, never had like bad service on a Southwest flight. Like usually, I'd say like it's true. Once we get on the the plane, we have no issues. Are usually fun, if not fun as a bonus, if not perfectly cordial, not so. That's why we like them. This is Chad, the true budget master. (laughs) Yes. Kaylee also needs the leg room. Yeah, see, it, it diff, one, it's not one size fits all. Yep. Everyone has a different preference. As long as I have a jacket, because the most uncomfortable flight I ever was on was one where I just didn't have a jacket, and I just felt like I was in a refrigerator the whole time. <laughs> you were cold. I was so cold. The Disney Rewards credit card is nice for having Disney dollars, but not the best rewards overall. They do offer a limited time increase. Yeah. See? So... Because you know you're going to Disney and spending money at Disney constantly, it's it's not a bad idea to have yeah. a Disney gift card or the Credit. reward card. Also, they offer like specific photo ops for Disney. Yeah, like little companies. perks and stuff. Anyways, okay. Um, so, step one, and we kind of got down the rabbit hole of airlines and whatnot, which it, it plays a large role in your budget, right? Is the airline. If you buy early, though, it matters less which airline you pick. So you have a little bit more flexibility. That's that's the key thing. We book eight to 12 months in advance when we can help it, six to eight months in advance in a pinch. If we come down to about three months, we're in trouble. So the earlier you book, the better things are going to be. Three months, we consider that to be like almost Short a spontaneous notice. trip. <laughs> Look, <laughs> when you go in as and many trips as we do. Really and truly only happened once. Yeah. I feel like, and happily that was after. to see Happily Ever After one Happily last time. Ever After was a whirlwind trip. We did one day, and that vlog is out, by the way. We did one day at Disney, not counting the resort, because we flew in like a couple hours early. And yeah, we were Colorado. one night but, park, one night going. But home. because we did that, we thought we had it all figured out. We booked three months, less than three, I think we booked like two months in advance, because as soon as they announced that the last show of Happily Ever After was going to be mid-September, We were like, shoot, that's well before our trip. We have to go down because we love Happily Ever After. And it was worth it. It was. It was. But it was stressful as heck. Because in the, like, literally the day of, Southwest canceled our flight. The day we were supposed to fly out. And they transferred us to a flight the following day. And that, I don't fault Southwest for that. I kind of do, but I don't. Like, I, I was mad at the time. It was but the madness of the... It was the fact like, that we had no recourse except to rebook on an earlier flight that same day. And we were literally, like, as soon as we got the email, I was rebooking. And we were pulling our pants on and packing things. I was, like... Spontaneously throwing things. We were like, we gotta go, we gotta go. Our new flight leaves in on an hour. <laughs> with me to the air, airline. It was bad. It was bad, but it was worth going down. And you can't tell how stressed we are in that vlog because we were so happy once we got there. But man, what a turn. So I would say always leave yourself some wiggle room as well on travel day because that is something I didn't figure into is, this. Is, I was going to say that's not in here. Never. Well, <laughs> well I guess that's not budget. budget. Yeah. yeah. Never, ever plan that's anything the, for your travel how day. How to reduce your stress. There's a we could do a whole other live on reducing stress. And it wouldn't be helpful because we'd find new ways to be stressed. <laughs> Southwest is always fun. I miss direct flights from PHX to Orlando. There's so few yeah. now. Uh, we are fortunate as well in that we live very close to Baltimore, which is an international pinpoint on the map. Um, so we have a lot of direct flights to Orlando. If we miss one, which is what happened, they canceled one, but they had another one leaving slightly earlier that evening, which wasn't canceled. So we switched to that one at no extra charge. Um, so that is an advantage that we have that a lot of places don't. We know Kaylee, when she came to California with us, she's flying out of an airport that big in Birmingham. So fortunately, she made it to Baltimore, no issues, but getting back home to Birmingham were very few flights. I think she was on a puddle jumper after a transfer to get back home. It was an Airbus, yeah. It was a direct flight that was canceled, and there was no other direct flight. So. Honestly, I don't. after seeing the plane that Mitch and Devin had to get on to leave Belize, 
That was a true that little was, jumper. That was the smallest plane I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rewards card. Yep. Dollars for food and drinks at Epcot. Yep, yep. Baltimore rules. No, I will never ever say that in any other context. Baltimore's airport, Baltimore's is, airport nice. is great. It's nice. Um, honestly, once you look like, again, once you get on a plane, your worries are over <laughs> until you Usually. have to fly back. But getting on the plane sometimes can be troublesome. Last comment from Morgan. My friend just flew southwest, and the same thing happened. We got to the airport. They canceled it and rebooted him to fly at it. Oh, my God. Out of D.C.? Horrible. Here's the pro tip. Don't fly out of D.C. <laughs> if you can help it. We had to fly Kaylee out of D.C. Yes. to get her home. Because, well, we didn't have to, but it was the easiest of limited, not-so-easy options. I will just say there's a reason why I insist on flying out of BWI instead of Reagan or Dulles. Oh, it's, those are further away from us for one, but yes, well, that's, they're but that's, a little bit more. Like chaotic. Frontier doesn't come to BWI, or at least it didn't for many, many years. And that's why I picked Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it looked really tiny. Think of it as a private jet. You guys have arrived. It's true. All right. Account for the season. This is step two. When you're planning a trip. And this actually comes into play with some trips we planned very recently. When we start thinking about a trip, the first thing we ask is, when do we want to go? The next thing we ask is, when don't should, we want to go? Yeah, shouldn't we go? When do we need to avoid going? Um, this can come down to a lot of things. For one, it comes down. The biggest thing is usually crowds. Um, if we're looking at, as we often are, going to a theme park, we're looking at how crowded is it going to be at this time of year versus that time of year. Weather is another big thing. Um, in Florida, basically any time between September and probably February, no, hurricane season. <laughs> it's not into February. He's it's wrong. been into February. It's it's we've August. Been hit by it. It's August through October is hurricane season. It's been we've been hit in February. No, we have not. Last time. We it's have been, not. Not. Yeah. That's just a regular Florida storm. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Someone who who lives in Florida, tell Tim what hurricane season is because <laughs> it's not in February. If only we knew people who lived in Florida, right? Uh, um, there may be a few <laughs> on this live now. Oh, we missed one from the Epic Adventure. DC is the worst traffic. It is. Agreed, 100%. Yes. By the way, if you're flying to DC, uh, springtime is cherry blossom time. And Katie and I have not officially been to see the cherry blossoms. Together. Together. We've both seen the child. them. But yeah, they're, again, when when do you want to go? When don't, we, don't you want to go? These are things to think about. Um, we're plotting courses to maybe at some point go to international Disney parks, which has always been a big bucket list item for us. And, you know, looking at, let's say Tokyo Disney, Golden Week. It's a thing in Japan, it's not a thing here. In Japan, Golden Week is when like three major localized holidays overlap. Everyone gets out of school, everyone gets out of work and the crowd calendar, it's solid red. I'm talking like shoulder to shoulder to shoulder, like everyone lined up in a huddle not being able to move or breathe because of how busy it is. Think Magic Kingdom on Christmas Day the all whole week. week yeah. <laughs> um, so these things, these these do play into everything. And we did a live stream on, um, I can't remember what it was that we, I think it was Skip the Line Passes where we mm -hmm. were talking about it being crowded and whether or not it was worth buying Fast Pass. You can use crowd, crowd prediction resources like touring plans and is it pack.com for certain types of attractions. We care a lot about theme parks, so theme parks is mostly what we're looking at, but other things, um, haunts, local attractions, state attractions, historical attractions, they all have like bulletins saying, if you wanna avoid the crowds, it's best to come this time of year. So do your homework, go online, check out the website, see what they have to say. <laughs> there are so many comments flying by my head right now, and most of them are about Mitch and Devin small planes. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan says hurricane season is June 1st through November. Okay, so I was off by one month. It's still yeah, not February. Shame on you. My bad. I guess you don't know it all. I don't know it all. I learn stuff <laughs> all the time from my friends. It's about to be hurricane season. Yep. yep. And Morgan, for those of you who don't know, used to live up near us. Now she is a full blown Floridian. So she has seen both sides of the coin. Yes. <laughs> 
Donna's trips usually involve Run Disney. Not always a good theme park time. True. Yep. Not always even a good run time, if I recall. A lot of the Run Disney races that our friends have run in so far have been rainy. But I can't be helped. It's Orlando. It's rainy half the year. Yep. <laughs> when is it not the rainy season? When is it Florida? not the rainy season? Well, let's account for the season. Yeah. I guess like you. maybe like the winter, maybe it might not be as rainy. This is a, let me pull us off the screen for half a minute here. Goodbye. This is a look at something that we kind of demoed in that skip the line. Um, this is a screenshot of touring plans. We're looking at crowds when we go into touringplans.com. It's a paid service. It's a platform that does um, crowdsource Disney wait times and Disney crowd flow and trying to figure out how to get you the best vacation for the lowest possible amount of time consumption. Uh, so this is primed to predict a crowd level based on one being the lowest number of people, 10 being the highest. And this is Disneyland, actually, because they cover both. So this, for us, is a perfect platform to try and figure out what we're looking at. But here's another thing to think about. Date-based pricing. If you're going to a, a theme park, most of them at this point are on a date-based pricing system. They're not fixed. The summer months are always going to be more expensive than the winter months, no matter where you go. Slower season is going With to be With the exception cheaper. of, like, Christmas time. Yeah, they're more expensive. Christmas Day and New Year's Day, and maybe the week in between. I think I they know. might hike those prices up a little bit. But yeah, date-based pricing is a thing, and it's a thing everywhere. It's not just a thing at theme parks. So you got to kind of pay attention to what the prices are going to be like. If you plan to go on a low crowd lull, most likely you're going to hit a low cost lull as well. You're gonna lower cost. Lower, yeah. yeah. It depends on your destination. I'm, I'm trying to make everything more accessible, but we really do mostly think about theme parks when we go places. So when we're talking about like date-based pricing, we're like, eh, it's only $114 as opposed to like National History Museum might be $25 or a recommended Three. donation of five, you know? <laughs> um, but all of this kind of plays into the same stratagem. You got to think about everything when you start budgeting for it. We haven't even really gotten to the budget yet. These are all things that go into the budget because when you're planning a trip, you got to be like, it's kind of like planning a wedding. You plan for the dead of winter, much cheaper. You plan for the perfect summer's day, <laughs> it's going to add up. Step three, plot your course. What do I mean by this? I mean, assume you're getting where you're going and then figure out where you're going from there. So if you fly into, I don't know, LAX, like we just did for California, and you know you're going to Disneyland, you need to look at how far the airport is from Disneyland and what's in between. My thing is always, I don't want to cut into the trip too much with drive time. If we have to drive, I would rather dedicate a whole day to it, regardless of how long the drive is, if we're going 14 hours, if we're going four hours. I don't want to try to do a theme park or an event or anything like that in the same day as a long drive. So we will usually drive to a hotel, park it for a night, and then go from there. Um, so looking at this map, this is kind of what we did when we planned out our Disneyland trip. We knew we were flying to LAX. We grabbed our tickets as early as we could. We knew what day we were landing. Okay, now we need to know what we can do on the way or how we can cut down on the drive time so that we're not sitting in three hours of traffic at 11 p.m. at night, which is when we got in, by the way, um, trying to figure out how to get to Disneyland and having to start the following morning on empty. Well, the other thing was, like, for this trip, the reason why we flew to LAX and not perhaps a closer True. It's because airport we wanted to, to go Disneyland to Universal. is because we were going to Universal. Because so. we knew that, I mean, looking at the map, Universal, and it's not a, exactly a on the way type attraction, but it, if you know that you can hit Universal, Knott's Berry Farm and Disneyland reasonably in the same trip, there's no reason not to do it, especially if it's the one time you're going to go. Is it? No, we're going back. We're going to go back. <laughs> we have to. But for this, the purposes of this trip, it was kind of like, we have the time, we plan the time in, we have the budget, we plan the budget in, let's make the most of it. So this is what we did. We just looked at the map and we said, if we go from here to here to here to here, we can figure out how to get the most out of this day, this day, this day, and this day. And that leaves us talking then about the cost of staying in hotels. So when we're looking at hotels, we're usually looking at 
where we can save money and where we want to splurge. Because there are some really nice hotels in California. California is a great example. California, the Universal City Hotel that we stayed in that first night, baller. It was it fantastic. Was so, we got, there was like we, a there was like a five star wedding going on that night yeah. too. Oh there, man, they, it looked. Like, I totally forgotten about the wedding. Yep. That's probably where I got we my. We pulled cold. in, and I was like, we were in our like Grundy travel clothes, and there's these women getting out of elevators and like Met Gala ball gowns, and we're like, we don't belong here. We did not, but we were there anyway, yep. and they couldn't pick us, kick us out because so, we paid. It was very, very fancy. It was nice, but the room was also just as nice. Yes. Looking at the room, we did splurge on this first example of a splurge. We did splurge on a theme park view room because we knew we're going to this expensive hotel. We're going there primarily to hit Universal the following day. We didn't want to have to drive to Universal. We just wanted to walk leisurely. And that's what we did. It was a lovely stay. We got a fantabulous breakfast that cost way too much, but was really good. Um, and then we moved on to Knott's Berry Farm from there. But I think after Knott's Berry Farm, we went straight to the hotel that we were staying in for the first couple of days at Disneyland. Which and was that was a... another choice we made was to split the hotels up. So we did. Yeah. And it was, I'm not going to say it was like completely stress-free switching hotels a couple of times on the same trip. I know that for the amount of packing we did, we had a lot of stuff to move. So maybe if we were to go again, we would cut down on the number of hotels. But here's the thing. We really, 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 really wanted to stay on Disney property at some point during the trip. Had we cut the Disneyland hotel out of the equation, we probably would have stayed at the Anaheim hotel a little bit longer, which was the cheaper, the yeah. cheapest probably hotel we stayed We knew we week. could not afford, we couldn't afford to stay at Disneyland, Disneyland hotel nights. for more than two nights. It, it was the great, the spring season. We were yep. just after Easter and everyone was getting into summer mode. And so we got a beautiful, beautiful park. We had, no rain, right? It didn't rain once the entire time we were there. It only California is a very spotty rain did situation. Did it rain at all? I don't think so. I don't so. think it did. I don't think it did. We got kind of a grayish morning one of the one of the days, but it quickly like oh. sussed out the sun. No rain. Any who's it's so yeah. Um figuring out where you want to stay and how much you're willing to pay on one or two nights accommodations is key. And if you're going to blow that off just drive however many hours and then just plant yourself and be planted all week you need to also choose a hotel that can be afforded for five to seven nights however long your trip is that'll cut down in your stress at that point you're choosing between whether or not you want to pay more to have a little bit less travel time or if you're if you want to break the hotel stays up pay a lot more actually <laughs> to stay in multiple different hotels and maybe cut down on your travel stress a little bit by not having to commute quite as far. Did I just do the same thing twice? I don't, I, I, I honestly, Sorry, I, guys, I tuned I'm, out at some I point. I was my... like, I don't know what he's talking about this anymore. Is marriage. I this started is like. reading the comments because I was like, he's on his own island and I don't know where he's going. <laughs> Sorry. You get my drift though, right guys? Please get my drift. Because Something. I feel like my train of thought kind of drastically derailed itself there. Something happened there. <laughs> it's fine. I will go through the comments really quick. Never been to any Disney park, but one day hopefully you will. You will. Epic, Epic adventure. adventure. You can't miss it. You it's got not to. perhaps the wildest of theme park experiences, but theming wise, it's hard to top. Yeah. And there is magic in every Disney park. There's lots of adventures. Winter's pretty dry. Okay, so that's the comment about Florida. January to May, May. yeah. So there that was, was about, about a three, three crowd wise at Animal Kingdom. Nice. Love a three at Animal Kingdom. There we go. Getting a rental car from LAX, the worst. Agreed. It, it I wasn't. mean, getting from LAX to the rental facility was difficult. Yeah, that was Because that traffic in LAX, especially in LAX, not just in LA, but LAX specifically. People are savage, ruthless and savage, and they cut off the parking buses constantly. The, the shuttle buses. So about a two, literally a two mile drive took probably 20 to 30 minutes just because we couldn't get in and out. And in LAX, if you haven't seen our travel blog yet, none of the rental facilities are on site. They're typically all two to three miles away for that exact reason, because it gets so crowded in there that you'd never get a rental car out. 
So they shuttle you in and out, but the shuttle buses themselves also take 20 yeah. to 30 minutes. I would say like the enterprise people we worked with were perfectly fine, but yeah. Once again, once you, once you get to the actual people involved with each exchange, yeah. you're usually okay. Um, but getting there is, is often a headache. It was a great view. Yes, Mitch and Devin also um, stayed at the Hilton Universal City. So they're, they didn't know this, but we actually had this hotel booked when they went on their Universal Studios Hollywood trip or their visit, I guess. It was part of a larger Disneyland trip. And um, when we saw their pics, we were like, oh, we made the, the greatest I'll decision. I'll never forget seeing Hogwarts amongst the mountains like that. That was fun. That was so cool. That was a good stay. Another budget tip, we are Hilton Honors members, so we got points for Same. it. Yes, we also are Hilton Honors members, and we actually just, another booking we just made was through Hilton Honors. Well, partially, because those, again, are slow to accumulate. Um, but we can use hotel points as well. What is the best Disney park to go to? Everyone's going to have a different answer. Okay, <laughs> I've only been to the two domestic parks are we, are we yeah. speaking like parks? I, in I assume general? we were talking about the domestic parks. I I mean, you know, For, I would say Disneyland. Well, DCA. It, 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 those are two different parks. But that's what I'm saying. Are we talking <laughs> about like the resorts or are we talking about parks? Because I would say, well, in Disney World, they're different <laughs> because the resort is pretty spread out. You might not have time to get to two in one. Our, our favorite in the Walt Disney World Resort is Animal Kingdom. And then I can't pick a park in Disneyland Resort proper. I feel like that's like picking a child. I would, I would pick Disneyland. But I love, D I love, I really I love like DCA, DCA also. Too. One of my favorite dark ride of all time ever is at DCA. Yeah. It's kind of a dark ride test track hybrid. But yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean if I guess I if we were you gonna were get a lot only of... going to go to one. I guess Disneyland. Oh, Mitch is very specific. Disneyland in October or December. That's true. Haunted Mansion Holiday. Haunted Mansion Holiday. All right. So let's say you've got your you've got your tickets, your plane tickets. You know where you're going. You know where you're landing. You know how you're getting to your end destination. What's next? Account for your activities. What do we mean by this? Some things you know you want to do. They're not just splurges. They're splurges what you plan for. What are your must do's? What are your must do's? Hold on, my live is in the in the way of my plan Ooh. for bills. Live. Plan for bills. You know you'll want to pay. That's an actual phrase I've said to somebody in putting together a budget, because there are some things that are like stupid expensive, especially in California, especially at Disneyland. There are some things that or are any stupid Disney expensive park. that have even well, California arguably even more so than yeah. Disney World. But there are things that you know you want to do regardless of how expensive they are. Or perhaps even because they're so expensive. Because you're like, oh, it's going to be really good. You're going to see eight princesses and the food's going to be really good and yada yada. I knew I wanted to do Princess Breakfast Adventures. I heard nothing but good things about it. And it was a the full experience had just come back online. That's you true. can hug characters again. You have people coming to your table. The buffets reopen. It's post-pandemic bliss right there is princess breakfast adventures so that was like the one meal since blue bio was closed when we went to disneyland that was the one meal that i was like must do it was 125 dollars per person before tax and tip so not cheap at all but it was something that we I knew the gratuity was included it was not oh i rounded up oops but for that one we knew we were going to do it so we had to plan for it. Your must-dos do not have to be food. If you know you're going to want to do, let's use the, the studio tour as an example. The studio tour is kind of an add-on to a trip we knew we were taking anyway. So we knew on our last day we would have a little bit of time, but not a ton. We wanted to go and do something that you could only do in Los Angeles or Burbank or you know, the Hollywood area. So we went to do the studio tour. That was an expense that we added on before we left, but it was something that we, together with Kaylee from Fantastic Phantoms, decided we wanted to do. And so we planned it into the budget. And so at the time, when since we were splitting things 66% uh, our way and 33% Kaylee's way, I would just figure it all into a budget sheet and I would let her know 
all right, since we decided we're going to do this, it's going to go up by this much. Then we bought the tickets and that expense is covered because we bought the tickets. So when we get there, all we have to do is present a barcode. It's already taken care of. So in that sense, the vacation is more relaxing because you know you're going to do these things. And so you know they're going to cost X amount of money. Sometimes, most times, you can pay that in advance. So by the time you get there, And a there, lot it's a of times, not, I would say a lot of times, sometimes you pay in advance online, you get a small you get a small discount too, like paying in advance rather than paying at the door or whatever. Not saying that's the case for everything yeah. or even necessarily what we did in California, but just knowing that, oh, I paid online and I paid in advance, you can save, you know, sometimes five, ten dollars per ticket by doing that. So it were the cars ride. It's the best. <laughs> Radiator Springs Racers, my favorite dark ride of all time. It's probably never gonna change. I'm just being realistic. It's so good. You say in Hollywood and Walt Disney World. I read that wrong the first time, but then I it registered that there's we're talking about two different parks. <laughs> Miss Mess Dues. So anyway, guys, your must-dos do not necessarily have to be dining. They don't have to be tours. They can be whatever you want to do. But if you know you're going somewhere, I mean, and you if want you're to planning for a trip to a, you know, place like, I don't know, if you're going to Italy and you absolutely must take do a gondola this, down, yeah, the river. Yeah, it's not a gondola, is it? Are they called? They're not called gondolas. I thought it was a gondola. Hmm. Who's, who's been, been to, to Italy? Who's been to Venice and knows what the little boats are? Or if you want to go see oh, a winery we're so or whatever. Stupid. Help. <sighs> we haven't traveled internationally in a while. We haven't traveled internationally together anyway, at all. But just but. like knowing what activities or whatnot, like, you know, we're we're thinking about, you know, if we wanted to go visit Hawaii or something. Oh, would we do a helicopter tour? Would we do we this? We call them planned expenses. Yeah. When so we know that there's a there's a splurge we must make. Yeah. What we just is, figure it in. Yeah. Now this does not cover incidentals, which I will get to, but it is good to figure out what your must do's are so that you can pay for them in advance. And when you get there, then you can figure out what your incidentals are because there will be some, no matter what. If you're going on a vacation, you're bringing something home. And sometimes you're splurging on stuff you don't plan on splurging on. So it's good to have a little bit of room in the budget. Sometimes you splurge on all the drugs in CVS. Hey, Andy. Welcome to the party. Hello. Gondola. It is a gondola. Bum, bum, bum. That's right. two. That's two. That's Wait. two. You were right about two. When were you right about two things? I was right about hurricane season not lasting as long as you said. No, that you that, I was right about that. No. You, you were, said till February. But you you were off by a month. He doesn't win the hurricane season argument. But he gets the gondola. I don't know why I thought gondolas were just the Tell sky Tell you what, boots. give the video a thumbs up if you think Katie won that argument, and give the video a thumbs up if you think I won that argument. We'll even it out. <laughs> it's called a gondola. See, Epic Adventure knows, too. I Everyone knows. Everyone I just, but us. For some reason, I thought it wasn't a gondola. I've never been there. Boom! Food and drink. Step five. This actually isn't that... There aren't that many steps, guys. <laughs> I promise we're not going this down is, these are, This is our step five. This is our step you five. You could have less or more steps. Accounting for food and drink. So what this looks like for us, who often go to theme parks for food and drink and spend a long time, we, we've we taken to calling meals or categorizing meals rather by different theme park terminology, even when it might not officially apply to what we're doing. Like table service. Quick service, table, table service, table. snacks and beverages. Yep. <laughs> so quick service is when, you know, you can think of fast food as quick service too. It doesn't have to be in a theme park. Quick service can be just rolling through a drive through someone or, hands you food and you're good to or go. Or counter service. Some people might think of it as counter service. Yeah. Counter service is good too. So I am covering up the thing with the live again. I love that live icon, but sometimes it's obstruction. In the way. Um, estimate the cost of your meals. So I had put in this chart estimated average cost. That's not actually accurate because the average cost is not necessarily going to be this high for different types of meals. This is what I think is probably the top end of the costs. And maybe it becomes the average when you figure in places like Disney for table service. Because a character meal at Disney is going to cost $50 to $70. Yeah, like or a princess meal is $125. Like there's no one size fits all here. 
but uh, I would say this is the high end. So I try to estimate what's going to be the high end of every meal. How much can we figure on needing to save for the use of dining on this particular trip based on how many people and how many meals we're going to have. So if we know we're planning on doing quick service most of the day, we'll do $20 per person per meal. Okay, that's three of us. That's three meals. That's about... 60, 60, 60, 180, and then I set aside 180. But if we know we have table service meals booked, these numbers are not going to be act exact, but they're going to be close. And this allows us to kind of formulate how much we need to set aside because you can buy gift cards for things like Disney, but anywhere but Disney and Universal and theme parks that you know have their own lines and their own merch and their own product where you can buy gift cards in advance, you're going to have to do this on the spot. So if you know you're going out to a lot of table service meals on a trip, you can probably plan on roughly right now in 2022 at this moment in our area, $30 per person per meal. Mm -hmm. But this is not set. It varies. You kind of have to do your own homework and do some digging. I use TripAdvisor a lot to do like reviews. And usually I'll go on and type like expensive and see what person has complained about i can't believe my meal cost 45 dollars and then i'll be like okay so the high end is 45 dollars. <laughs> but you know it it varies very much by location so you kind of have to do a little bit of your own homework i'm missing comments again i'm so sorry you guys disney world quick service adults can order kids meals which i do frequently that is true too it's true here's why i don't i'm large hold on i have to hide the comments so you can Ah. <laughs> but they can the kids meals can be if you're a good snack if you're want a more substantial snack too yeah but but yes i 100 percent agree that's it's a whole tip. different story when you add drinks yeah agree with this if too. you're talking about alcoholic, alcoholic drinks, drinks then yes not only do you have the cost of the drink itself oh, which is usually an arm and a like, leg but then liquor tax and then you like tip your bartender if you're at the bar and all of a sudden you've just paid $18 for a drink and you're like, it adds oh, up. No. It adds up. That's what I've done. No, <laughs> that's what I've done. Well, that's like that Not bar. What I've done, but that, that's what I've that done. Drink you know got, what you did. That drink I got at the Disneyland hotel by the poolside. That was so good. That it was, it was delicious. It's it was a like pina a pina colada slushy. Pina basically. colada with like raspberry something or other in there. That's what I did. That, uh, you know, if you think of a kid's meal as a snack, absolutely, I would yeah. go in on a kid's well, meal. Well, like, we, I, I mean, that's what I'm we did I'm just starving to try. all the time. It's, it's a, a fatal it's flaw true. on my part. He is always hungry. I will have a snack that will get me hungry. through the day, but and I can I can wait if I have a late breakfast or an early dinner. I can wait and I can live on snacks for Another a bit. Another pro tip, just eat so much food for breakfast that you're not no, hungry hold again on. I take for that like back. 10 hours. Take that. I'm, I'm pulling that one back out of the air before that hits the internet because we did that before our Southwest flight on travel day to California. And guess okay. what? We ate way too early. I'm not talking about we the we Southwest full. flight. I'm talking about like, for example, like when we had breakfast at Boma that day, like I don't think True. we ate for we like- didn't, We didn't have to eat lunch. We day. didn't eat but, lunch and we ate like a late But that's dinner. still an, a planned expense. Yeah. We went in knowing what that was going to cost. So Pina we Colava. I think that was it. Pina Colada, yep. I think that was it. It was tasty. Not Trader Sam's, but the, the adjacent. The Tangaroa Terrace. Tangaroa, yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, I'm pretty sure they make the Pina Colada at Disney World Resorts, too. I don't think it's an, I don't know if it was yeah. an exclusive. We there. have a Trader Sam's Grog Grotto in. Yes. No, 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 but I think it's at, like, I swear I just saw Connor get it somewhere. The Pina Colada. Connor. <laughs> Summon Carousel of Connor. All right. This is the last step before you actually start breaking everything down. Account for travel. This literally just comes down to boop, your flights, everything else you're going to need, the rental car. Boop. If you haven't prepaid for this stuff, if you haven't listened to step one and booked as far out in advance as possible, you need to account for what this is going to add to your final total. Um, and in the case of the rental car, you can't prepay, you can't prepay. You can put down, um, a reservation and say, I'm going to put this much in and you know, kind of ahead of time what it's going to cost, but you cannot prepay it. You have to pay there at the counter. So unfortunately rental cars are going to add a lot. Here's the other thing, gas, 
you rent a car, you're going to have to feed it. So you get a, at some point, it doesn't have to be at the beginning of the trip, might not even be the middle. It might be right before you return it, but you have to fill that tank. And in California, gas is up there. But elsewhere, it's also up there. It's yeah. just perhaps not up there as high. So right now is a bad time to talk about gas. It might There might be brighter days ahead. Um, but these are all expenses that you kind of have to figure in. So once you have all of that, we start to look at divvying up the expenses. Now, this part only matters if you're traveling with a party. If you're traveling independently or if you're traveling as a small family, there's nothing to divvy, right? Because you're carrying the full load. But for the last three trips, right? Because my family and then October. Hey, October with Kaylee. Yep. So the last three major trips we've taken with a party, a travel party of some size. So let me really quick pull up something special for y'all. Oh, yeah. If you've waited this long. If you've waited this long. You get to see. But I have to do it differently. Oh, wait. I don't know how to how he's gonna share it. Shares. Oh, a spreadsheet. <laughs> Look, there's only one spreadsheet, right? It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> if you love spreadsheets, if you love spreadsheets, we got a show for you. Mandy said she loves spreadsheets. She did. So I'm taking that as approval to just do whatever I want with this spreadsheet. All right, guys, so this may or may not help you. And it's okay if it doesn't, because again, everyone is different. This is linked in the description for this video. I made this available for everyone. If you want to use it, you do not have to use it. And I have filled in some arbitrary numbers and some arbitrary descriptions, some of which are leftovers from things we actually used, other things we just made up. But this is kind of my template that I built myself for figuring out a budget amongst a travel party. We figure out hotel cost, we figure out theme park ticket cost, theme park fast passes, you know you're gonna spend them. It's an anticipated expense. Plan for the things you know you're gonna wanna pay for. Food, we can estimate based on all the stuff I told you. Rental car, we know the exact down to the cent number that we're gonna have to pay, we just can't pay in advance. So we have to put that in. Gas expenses, we can kind of estimate based on how much mileage we're covering if we're using now uh, i think it was the epic adventure did make a good point electric car no gas cost then you got to find those electric power ops though which I think <laughs> which are, are becoming more more, more, more accessible yeah. also i don't know depending on how much mileage you're actually putting on the car you may not even need to charge it yeah true i don't know much about electric cards cards cars <laughs> <laughs> I will say the electric cars are harder to find at rental facilities because they always give me the option to do that at Enterprise, but half the time when I show up at Enterprise, they don't have the car I rented anyway, and they just give me Right, they're upgrade. trying to give us the gigantic Suburban, <laughs> and we're like, no, thank you. It's not that I couldn't take it, and sometimes I do take it, but it's just that, you know, they, they try their best to give you what you're asking for, but oftentimes they'll just upgrade you if they don't have it. So electric cars right now at this present time are fewer and further between, but what are you looking at? <laughs> Kaylee says, ah. I love how the hotel allocation says shelter. What else was I going to call it? Accommodations? Mm, you love potato. that word. No, amenities is the word I love. You also love accommodations. <laughs> you think you know what I love. Mandy, whoop Mandy in the spreadsheets. spreadsheets. Any who's it? All right. So knowing... Basically, this is how it works. Once you have your estimated price or your exact price, you just fill it into the columns. There's a bunch of zeros here. If you choose to use the spreadsheet, you can fill these zeros in with whatever you want. Add in that, add in that, add in that, write whatever you want. I don't care. It's your sheet. Make a copy, go to town. Um, but what I usually do is I figure in the exact cost of Hotel A, Hotel B, and all these other things. And as I start paying it, I leave the remaining cost in this column. That lets me kind of keep track of how much is paid off total, which all of this is automated because I took a week and a half to figure out the formula, but I did it. I figured it out. I and don't now do everything formulas. does automated population on its own. So you can see if we zero everything out, if we zero, if, <laughs> if we zero everything, ah, 
only when I'm on blast, right? You have to save a copy first, I realize, because I shared this with myself. If you save a copy and zero everything out, all of this is going to go to 100%. Your trip's paid off. If you have Ooh. a lot left in this column, that means you still got more to pay. If you split everything 50-50, party A, party B, it's going to do all the math for you. If not, you're going to have to change this formula to the percentage points on whatever you're breaking everything down into. And as party B makes payments into the pot, you can just add them in here. I list a date so I can keep track of everything. And that totals into the balance paid by party B and how much of the trip is left to pay. So this looks like a lot. It's really not that complicated. Um, and no one has to use it either. I just thought maybe it would be helpful given that a lot of us have to figure out everything on the go. And that can be not just stressful for your vacation, but also it can get really expensive if you don't know what you're spending and you don't know how yeah. to stop spending. Sometimes you think it's like, oh, we're doing fine. And then you actually put everything together and it's like, oh, this trip is going to cost $6,000. Exactly. And Maybe sometimes you need to scale back. And sometimes you budget $6,000 in advance thinking, oh, hey, if I give myself 12 months, I can save that up. Sure. Probably you can. No problem. We also have done that and saved up a lot of money to take more splurgy trips. But then you get there and you're like, I've spent my $6,000. Why is there still $2,000 to go? Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand where this $2,000 came from. And that actually, oops, why did that happen? Well, I was going to say that would be a perfect transition into our final or semi-final step. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. There it is. Account for incidentals. Oh, no, the mouse is on the screen. I am the worst presenter, you guys. No, you're not. <laughs> I can't Account figure out how to switch screens. So basically what the incidentals are is your trip haul. <laughs> Anything that you decide you can't live without while you're there. For Katie, this is pins. And for Kaylee, too, I think. Kaylee does a lot of pin hunting as well. But when... I also bought a hat. Yeah, and I bought a spirit jersey. You know why? Because I was cold. I was sick, but I was also genuinely cold because it got a I little bit I would say that was now. also an incidental was whatever money we had to spend to make Warmer Tim, clothes. Tim feel as comfortable as possible. Well, hold on. I'll get there. This assumes you're not getting sick. You don't have any emergencies or accidents and you need nothing more than what you Wait. came Wait. What are you looking at? This comment. Become a cast member so you don't have to pay the tickets to Disneyland. <laughs> I mean, that's not going to be you, an accessible You don't have to for pay everything. for tickets to Disneyland? I don't know. I'm not a cast member at Disneyland. <laughs> I need more details, Devin. Devin? Katie insists on more details. I thought it was, I thought if, I mean, I didn't know if being a cast member meant like, like it was transferable to Disneyland. I guess cast member, you're employed by the Walt Disney Company. Mitch's, Mitch's comment seems better. <laughs> <laughs> it's way less effort. You don't have to plan your schedule. Oh my gosh, that's so cool, Devin. I'm so happy for you guys. Go back to Disneyland. You don't have to pay. We Can't realized that we well, never mind. I won't say that. We we it, well, I don't it know was, what you were gonna say. No, I won't say it. But we realized it's like ah, we're not pass holders anymore in Disneyland. So like we have to pay for your tickets and things. But there were a lot of DVC discounts in Disneyland. There were. Too. You can carry over Disney vacation. So Club DVC discounts. discounts did still apply. But bear in mind, this isn't a Disneyland live stream. I know. It just always goes <laughs> We just back. always want to talk but yeah, about yeah, in incidentals. Kaylee bought three spirit jerseys because she was cool. Well, one of them you bought because it looked awesome. Yeah. And you wanted to have it. And that's fair. Did you buy I three bought spirit mine. jerseys? I remember the LA one, the, pink one, the LA, LA one, one, and the and, and the purple one. one. That's it. So maybe, although maybe you bought a third one before going on the trip. I don't know. This spirit jersey was my first ever spirit jersey. I don't honestly think I look the best in spirit jerseys, so it's not my preferred. That's a lie. Style. I think he looks great. Well, yeah, because you're the one who told me to buy it. But um, it was just because I was cold, and I was I didn't want to buy something like super heavy, like a big floopy jacket. 
that would have cost hundreds more. So I just spent hundreds something on a spirit jersey. And these are expenses that like we didn't necessarily know we were going to spend, which is why we're calling them incidental, but that we knew we were going to spend some money on something that fit this category. So we planned a oscillating incidental budget. Now, mind you, we were there for a week. We were not just going to Disneyland. We were in California. We were covering a lot of ground here. So we planned about a thousand dollars in incidental, but which is a, it's a ton of money. Don't get me wrong. That's like a whole month of rent for a large segment of the population. But I, I just wanted to be sure that we didn't under budget and wind up going way over and wind up coming home in soul crushing debt. Yeah. Which we kind of came home Honestly, with that anyway, but I it was feel, expected. I yeah. feel like between the three of us, we were very reasonable with our... We were our, frugal enough, with but our, we I wouldn't use the word frugal. Enough. I would use I the, said frugal enough. I would say we didn't it's go like ham God on bless souvenirs. Her heart. <laughs> now you... Oh. <laughs> Anyways, you have to plan on not being able to plan for some things, if that makes sense. You have to leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Oh, the Hufflepuff that's one. A, that's right. She, he does look fine. He's so self-conscious. That's right. Kaylee did buy the Hufflepuff one, too. I forgot about that. But they're all so cute and different. You're talking about comments that isn't on the screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm distracted. I agree with Epic Adventure, too. Marry, you marry a billionaire so you don't have to pay for anything, including hotels. Or better yet, marry a billionaire that owns their own hotel. That would be cool. Then you don't even got to worry about nothing. Mm. You could just stay in the, You don't even have to travel. You could stay in the hotel. How you live in the hotel. This is my last pro tip, and I added this because of what went down in California. Account for emergencies. We usually take our emergency money, if we have an emergency, which is always regrettable, out of our incidental budget, which is what we did. It wasn't the end of the world, but stuff happens. <laughs> Things go wrong. Hold on, I'll pull the live. That live is always in the wrong place. Yeah, but when you're missing it, you're like, oh, no, the live is gone. I know. I do love that graph. Buying water bottles, car breaking down, me getting sick. These are not all of these things happened on the California trip. Two of them did. The other one happened. We didn't have a breakdown. We had a tire. We had a flat, flat tire. We had a punctured tire. We had to swap which it. All of didn't these didn't end things, up being a budget problem. It was more of a time budget yeah. loss. But all of these things happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, it might be that you spend nothing on these issues. It might be that you spend hundreds of dollars on these issues. You got to have a little bit of wiggle room for things like this. Flights getting canceled 100%. That's also a thing. Yep. And if you have to switch to a flight, like with Southwest in mind, if you have to switch to a flight that's slightly more expensive than the flight you booked, then you got to pay the difference. Mm -hmm. So there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to do that. Kaylee and I got just the tiniest peek into the Club 33 at Disneyland. Just like the, the door, the door peak. opened, the bounce, he wasn't a bouncer, but the cast member came, escorted someone out, the door was open, and I was like, <laughs> Yep. Was, was that what you were like? I was leaning into the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flights getting canceled, flight switching. I also have PTSD, believe you me. Anytime, literally, literally, anytime I'm a day away from a flight and I got an email from Southwest, panic. Just ru before I even click on anything, I just see Southwest Airlines is in the from line and I'm like heart rate up, blood pressure crushing, oxygen depressed, <laughs> everything is going to fall apart. None of those words but then make sense, but that's okay. I, I hate, I hate being on the internet with a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I can't my have my own little moment. Crushing me. <laughs> I can't have my own little moment. I can't use adjectives in a medical context without her correcting me, guys. Tell you what, if you think Katie is wrong, give the video a thumbs up. <laughs> I want them to thumbs up the video, though. <laughs> All right. Anyway. I'm sorry, guys. He looked like a fancy person. He was. Yes. Anytime fancy we get emails guy. from an airline carrier the day before we fly, it's just, it's just triggering because it could be your flights being moved or canceled. And then it turns out to be, hey, we're offering $49 deals to Las Vegas. And I'm like, 
don't ever email me again. <laughs> it happens. It happens. The bottom line here tonight, guys, we do want to call this out. Traveling is expensive, and it's never not going to be expensive. If you want to see areas of the world where you don't live, you're going to have to pay out. Unfortunately, it's the way the world works. And some places are going to be more expensive than others. Or know someone who lives in a foreign country. Yes, or marry a billionaire, or marry a cast member, or all these different avenues of marriage we've talked about. But at the end of the day, <laughs> memories are forever. So what we like to say, and this is not our phrase, by the way. I heard this on a podcast. It's not mine. Just want to just. There's no copyright infringement here. Leave the world with memories, not dreams. We can sit around dreaming about that trip we might take if we could only set aside $4,000 or we can save up $4,000, know that it's going to cost $4,000. Just live with the fact that the $4,000 is going into that and have an amazing time on our trip. Yeah. If you give yourself enough runway, now mind you, again, this isn't going to be a one size fits all advice. Some people have to work really, really, really hard for the money that they have. And it's much harder to set things aside. If you have a larger family, it's harder to travel with a largely larger family. We're a family of two. We have, we both work full time. We have good jobs that frustrate us sometimes, but pay very well. We have good vacation time allotment. So we're able to do these things. And the key thing for us is just giving ourselves enough time and planning ahead far enough to put together a proper budget so that we're not going into spiraling debt coming back. But Whatever your situation is, however long you have to save, it's worth going places, seeing things and doing things while you have the opportunity to. You never know when a global pandemic could kick up and take these opportunities off the board and leave you wanting for all the things you could have done that maybe aren't even available anymore now because the, the landscape has changed. So... We choose to travel because it brings us joy and it means saving up a lot. It means And it means not having some material things. It does. We, we are short we're, on some of we're the We're driving really crappy cars right now. Yeah. <laughs> One of them could die at literally any time. One of but... them But just we... made it past the replace need to replace uh... cycle. Yeah. Every 10 years. But... But yeah, I mean, it, it, you're right, because we're, we're making sacrifices in yeah. the day to day. We're living frugally on the day to day so that we can you, take you more. You like to use the word frugal a lot. I don't think that always applies to us. <laughs> I picture frugal. We do a lot of door dashing, but we're not yeah, that that's frugal. Not frugal. <laughs> but other than that, I'm just saying. The point, the point uh... is still sound. I just don't want people to get this impression that we're like really smart with money. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. I agree with Devin. Travel is worth every penny. Yes. We should have just said that. Yes. Because <laughs> then yeah. we wouldn't be. M arguing. Mitch made a good point too, right? Up, yeah, above that. It's that, true. Yeah. It's true. We just. Nowhere is more expensive than the United States. Let me just. Believe me, there's been times where I've been like, hey, we could go here. And immediately Tim's like, where's the nearest theme park? And I'm like, but what if we didn't go to a theme park? And I think his head literally explodes sometimes. Coaster credits. <laughs> uh, Have you booked your hotel yet? Oh, yeah. Failure. Yep. Really agree. Thanks, Southwest. Anyway, guys, <laughs> that's our show. <laughs> Hope you guys hey. learned something tonight or something that we said was helpful. I know we we have a lot of charged opinions and we're we're pitching things that won't necessarily apply to the whole, but we we do want to pass on at least the lessons that we've learned and hope that they can benefit somebody else. And we think that it is totally worth planning out a proper budget to go on a longer trip and make the most of your vacation. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying it because you're saving too much and pinching every penny, it's not really a vacation. Yeah. This week's Creator Spotlight. I can't believe I haven't highlighted Connor before, but I went through every single presentation. And, and you I, realize I you haven't? I hadn't highlighted him. So earlier when I was summoning Connor, Carousel of Connor is one of our good friends, lives in Orlando, creates great content, one vlog a week right now, plus a live stream. So he's, he's grinding away and all of it is great. Uh, if you're into Disney shopping. I think he shopping, just made 2,000 two subs. Right? He did too. Yeah, so. that's right. 
So if you're uh, into Disney shopping vlogs, he's got you covered on that. He does a lot from the character warehouse, but he also goes to the parks occasionally. And those personally are my favorite vlogs because I love seeing what's going on in the parks. Either way, he's a great guy, great content. He has a YouTube and an Instagram. Um, so definitely check him out at Carousel O'Connor. Eric Neal is one of our buds from the Hershey area. If you have ever been to Hershey Park, or if you haven't, he's a great guy to check out because he lives there. So he goes way local. more often than we do. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, website, and a Twitter. Very, very active guy. Um, and he actually went to lunch with us at the Chocolatier most recently as the last time we saw him. So it's been a minute. We owe him a collab or two. And then lastly, Emily Enchanted is a YouTuber I've been following forever. I like her energy. We don't know her personally, but I think she's really inspired some of the positivity that we, we found so contagious. And um, hopefully we're passing on a little bit of that positivity to you in our vlogs. But that's always our goal is to be as positive as Emily Enchanted. So she has a YouTube channel and an Instagram account, and she's pretty active on both. She used to be a cast member. Now she is a regular park goer. So all of these bloggers and um, content curators or creators, not curators, creators are definitely people you should check out. Of course, mm -hmm. you can check us out as well if you're seeing us for the first time. I am so sorry you're seeing us for the first time. And this, this is not what we do best. And we've so. already shouted out many of our friends who are engaged in the comments too. Yep. So if you see a channel um, you don't recognize, um, please go check them out as well. Absolutely. And we got a couple, couple new people in the audience tonight as well, which we really appreciate. So guys, if you are just getting to know our channel, if you're not familiar with our content, um, please do check us out, subscribe if you feel so inclined. And if not, definitely check out everyone else. Like Katie said, who's been in the comments providing a little bit of feedback. We are a close knit community. We love you guys. We love you all. <laughs> so good call, Mitch. I knew you were coming after it. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. This is Especially one that Katie's because for. I actually hold on, hold on. Don't say anything. No, I wasn't gonna say anything. Kaboom. Yeah. <laughs> so now you can say your thing. Well I was gonna say like we literally didn't we get an announcement today? Today. About today we got an announcement with our first, first Halloween Horror Nights house. house. Not for California, who had announced actually the exact same house. A uh, uh, I was gonna say a couple weeks ago. I think it was a couple days ago. They were a little bit ahead, but each coast has announced one house. Um, we're super excited for Halloween Horror Nights. Our our first one ever was last year. Mm -hmm. We went with Kaylee from Phantasmic Fandoms, who's also in the comments. Um, and that was such an experience. I don't think we can ever compare it to anything else. We're going to try because we love haunts and we go to a lot of haunts on the East Coast. But man, there is no replacement. I don't Halloween think Horror Nights. nothing will replace walking through the Haunting of Hill House house. It's true. I came this close, you guys. Hold on, let me. I came this close, you guys, to making next next live be about all haunts and our projections for what we were excited for in the Halloween season. And then I was like, no, because we got a lot of haunts to go to. And Halloween Horror Nights is one that I think everyone can get behind. So yeah. we're going to talk about Halloween we'll Horror Nights. We're going to talk Halloween about we're going to talk about the speculation maps that have are constantly being passed around. They're updated constantly. Everyone goes to them for re reference on what they think might be at Halloween Horror Nights, and they're usually fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. So we're going to tell you what we're excited for, what we're hoping for, all that jazz. Mm -hmm. And we know that there's a lot of Halloween Horror Nights fans in yeah. our So bring your audience. predictions. So please come back and bring your predictions. We are not doing that next week. Fortunately, we finally earned ourselves a break, so we are going to be coming back on the day after Memorial Day, which is, I think, officially halfway to Halloween. I mean, but I if think, not, it's very close. Yeah, I mean, halfway to Halloween is month of May for me. But. Vanessa knows we love our spooky season. And we just came off of a halfway to Halloween oh, yeah. event on Friday at Hold our... Hold on, I, me I meant to talk about that, oh, too. okay. Um, well, you can, you okay. can say your thing. I well, just, we just, just we're just kind out. of in the mood because we just came um, off of our uh, local local haunts halfway to Halloween event this weekend. It's yep. uh, Field of Screams in Mountville near Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, so we just did that. So we're kind of like feeling the spooky mood and we're just really excited for what's coming uh, with that attraction later this season at just as well as like everything else. I mean, it feels like 
I mean, we're going to start getting pictures soon enough of the Halloween Horror Nights houses and stuff going up because they start building. This is it the perfect so time to talk early. about it because the hype is going to just keep on building from here. Yeah. But in reference to what Katie was saying, um, we were at Field of Screams on Friday night doing the halfway to Halloween. Friday and the Friday 13th. Friday. Yep, That's right. Friday 13th. Double. I, there was supposed to be an end to the double thing, but I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we actually uh, will have that vlog out on Thursday. For those of you who are caught up on our vlogs and are interested in the spooky season stuff, we're going to take a short break from the California content. We, I know we just started pumping that out, but this, because it was literally last weekend and it was a seasonal event, I do want that to come out first so you all can get a sense of what that looks like in case you decide if you're a local that you want to go to fill the screens in our area. Um, it's going to be really cool. I will say as well, this is a little bit of a tease. I don't want to promise anything, but we had a great conversation with the owner. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking that the next Field of Screams vlog we put out when we actually do hit spooky season is going to be a little bit more informative than the previous entries. Might have, have a little a little more insider knowledge than we're Ooh. used to. So you can look forward to that. In the meantime, that vlog will be out on Thursday, halfway to Halloween, Halloween Horror Nights speculation live which we should probably work on shortening, will be the, the you Tuesday called it after... called HHN forecast. That's better. The Tuesday after Memorial Day will be our next live stream. Yeah. And we will absolutely be visiting Busch Gardens Williamsburg again this year. It Love is on the Hallow Scream. Hollow Scream is one of our favorite local events. <laughs> so for now, you guys... We will go ahead and close it out. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you all for sticking it out. I know that we uh, we honestly weren't anticipating a large audience yeah, for this we one, thought this we really appreciate it. Kind of I thought this would kind of be a, a, a slightly less interesting topic, but we really appreciate everyone chiming in. We appreciate you guys all helping each other out in the comments and yeah. giving each other pro tips. Because as we say every time, we do not know everything and we always appreciate when you guys either fill in the gaps for us or share your experiences because we just, we learn stuff all the time from y'all. Absolutely. Anyway, guys, I'm Tim. I'm Katie. And every day is a new adventure. Thank you for joining. And remember, marry a billionaire. <laughs>